Hey YouTube, um, so I have a Phantom 3 standard edition drone and I've been looking for a hard shell case that will fit the drone um, and most of the cases I, I think uh, I haven't really had the opportunity to get my hands on any of them but most of the cases I've seen during my research um, it seems like everything else fits in the case just fine with the one exception and that's the controller. Um, thanks DJI for making that difficult for everyone so obviously that's a uh, marketing gimmick but uh, bottom line is is um, I bought this on eBay um, the foam that was originally advertised is actually not the foam that this came with it came with a different foam so uh, after thinking about it I decided I was going to try to cut the foam out and recess it so that the controller will be sitting flush to the bottom uh, a little bit better and then uh, I won't have an issue with the antenna uh, hitting but if you have a Phantom 3 standard edition and you want a hard shell case for fairly inexpensive price this is forty two dollars on eBay shipped uh, me I got this in California in about ten days uh, actually fr sorry five days um, it's a lot cheaper than the two hundred dollar options that are out there with DJI and um, uh, GoPro here we go Okay, so uh, let me show you the issue. Uh, the issue is that the shape of the controller area here does not fit my uh, standard controller. Uh, this antenna is actually up higher um, than this bar, as you can kind of see here. And so what happens is when the case closes in this, because the bottom of the case here is not cut out the controller sits up higher than it needs to in the case and the top presses on this and it bends this antenna and eventually that's just gonna break that antenna this piece at the end here and that's not gonna have good results so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carve out the inside here uh, lower this down so that it will fit a little bit further down and um, hopefully that will uh, solve the issue. All right, um, one thing to note, uh, right here at the bottom, it's really kind of, it's kind of hard to see here, but there is a, um, let's see if I move the camera here. There's a round section there to the right and left. You see it, there's like a little oval section. And that is what I'm gonna be cutting out uh, and, and basically uh, dropping down. So I've got my foam insert here. Uh, I'm going to take it out uh, of the shell and toss the case over here and just work with this piece here as I'm um, carving it out. Uh, the one thing you're going to want to be careful about is just not go through the back. Uh, you probably could go through the back um, and just cut straight through. Um, and then maybe retape this section back here, but I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I really don't want to do that. So I'm just going to trim out the inside here, and uh, hopefully that will uh, solve the issue. Now, one thing I want to point out is um, I modified my uh, standard controller. Um, the original mount, uh, which maybe some of you are still using, is uh, the mobile device mount that kind of clips on the back here. Um, sticks forward. I just hated it because it was always, you know, doing this every single time I tried to uh, mount anything. So I went and picked up the uh, the nicer controller. I think they use these on the Advance and the Professional, and um, I think maybe even the Inspire controller. But uh, this wasn't too difficult to uh, install, um, and I have a place for my lanyard here. And that's really the issue. Uh, this really doesn't fit in here um, very easily. It doesn't fit this way really. Uh, it doesn't fit this way. So really the only way it would fit is is putting it down inside here. And um, the problem is, is it sits up too high as I said. So let's try this out. Now I'm going to try a couple of different tools. Um, I'm going to try this uh, utility knife. I've got uh, a wood chisel that I'm going to try to be using as well. Um, I've got a couple of um, just regular knives. This is a uh, cold steel recon. Uh, 
and a uh, Kershaw um, blade that I picked up at a Turner out um, sale. And you can see on this blade, it's nice and flat. It's very similar uh, to the chisel blade where I can get kind of a flat um, press into the foam. Um, while these blades are point air, uh, it may be a little bit easier to control and, and cut through, but um, I'm thinking this might be easy because I can use um, just a little bit and it'll poke through it. Um, it might not be sharp enough though to get through, so we'll see how that works. Uh, and I also have my, my Leatherman Mutt here. It's a great tool. Um, you can use this uh, or just you know any kind of pair of needle nose or something if you need to try to pull out the, the uh, foam pieces as you're, um, as you're trying to yank on them. Uh, I'm just going to try to pull them out with my fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and um, try to start cutting into the foam here with the utility knife and see if that lets me get through it. Okay, that's a little bit harder to control. Um, it keeps bumping on this and uh, makes it a little bit difficult to, uh, to, to get the knife in. So I'm going to try the uh, flat chisel and I'm going to push down this way with the chisel and uh, start making some relief cuts around the outside of that round section. I'm also going to start using the, uh, the recon knife and I'll, I'll cut some more pieces out with that and we'll see how that works. Okay, so I'm just going to push down in here. And when I get to the corners, I'm just using the, the corner of the chisel here. And it's important because if you've ever done any real chiseling with wood, you know the most important part about cutting out of a mortise is to make sure that you get the edge um, nice and trimmed out first otherwise you're gonna you're gonna bust out the end of the the grain of the wood here so all right so let me get this into position and we'll uh, try to start chisel chiseling away at it okay so what I'm doing next is I'm gonna cut little relief cuts down the middle and I think I'm gonna switch to the recon for this one and I'm just pushing down making a line here there's a couple of relief cuts here. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to make maybe one more here. And now I'm going to do a relief cut right down the middle here. So let's start. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm dividing a section of the foam so it comes out smoother and comes out into pieces. They have um, you know that special foam you can get that allows you to um, pull out chunks of it for camera equipment and things like that. This foam is a little denser. Um, it's more of like a PVC foam so it's um, a little bit harder to to make it look clean and, and flush. So just tracing back over my lines here, making sure that everything is nice and trimmed out. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the chisel and let's just see how this works. I'll push it down a little bit and then I'm gonna try to pull up. Let's see if that works. 
There we go. If I sort of twist it a little bit and tear it, maybe that'll work. Here's my first piece here. So you can see I got a hole right here and I'm just gonna make sure you don't go too far with that first one because then you will go through to the other side and you know not do what you want to do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this and we'll see what happens here. So far, once that first piece was pulled out, the rest has been pretty easy to pull out, actually. Um, now, on this last section here, um, I'm just going to dig my fingers in this way. And I'm, I'm actually I'm about a finger's depth um, down. Uh, if you look at one of the pieces of foam here that I've cut out, it's about this, the depth of my finger. So. I'm just pushing down and over to the edge here to peel that out. And I'm doing that so I don't rip it out the bottom. Once again, I don't want to do that. And I'll do my last twist here. And then we'll test the controller, see if the controller fits in there better. That's it. That's the last piece. Okay, before I um, put the controller in here and test it, I want to try to smooth out the bottom. Um, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's, it's really kind of rough down there now compared to the shiny surface. So all I'm going to do is just take that flat edge of the, of the chisel. And I'm just going to work, work it across here so that it's a little flush. Now, this is a super messy job. Um, so if you're not somewhere where you can vacuum it up easily, um, I would suggest, suggest getting somewhere where you can vacuum it up easy or pull it out without having it pop all over the place. It's kind of shooting all over my hand here. But this is, this is working pretty well, actually. Uh, so I'm back, and I'm going to go ahead and test fit this. And I'm pretty sure what's going to happen at this point. See, I, I carved out enough material for the bottom of this to fit in, but what I didn't allow for is this ledge right here um, to go down as well. So I'm pretty sure this is going to hit, and I'm probably going to have to cut some of that off too, just looking at it now. So let's try it here. Easier if I took the strap off of here. All right, here we go. Yeah, and sure enough, it's the same height. Uh, the reason I know that is because this uh, is about the same height as this, and it's obviously hitting this. Um, can't really see it down here, but there's definitely space. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to do some relief cuts for this and um, we'll see if if I can lower that down just a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and take my chisel again. And again, I'm just cutting some relief cuts here with that. It seemed like my other knife is a little sharper actually than the chisel. I think I need to sharpen my chisels. I've been using them for a lot of projects around the house lately. There we go. That's a lot better. So just make sure you use a sharp knife. Um, any, anybody that has ever been cut by a knife or ever had an accident with a knife will probably tell you that the majority of accidents happen because your knife isn't sharp enough so just make sure you have a sharp enough knife that you're using so that you don't 
hurt yourself or damage something, puncture something that you don't want to puncture. And I'm going to essentially just do the same same thing I did before with uh, the chisel here when I kind of twisted it. So I'm going to put it in here, twist the material so I can kind of break the edges a little bit here of the piece I want to pull out. And then I'm just going to reach in here. All right, so let's go ahead and test fit this again. We're going to take the uh, controller this time and drop it inside. And before this, um, this sat up about it, about a finger's width here, as you can see here. But now that I've cut the foam out, it goes down all the way. And I can actually feel it a little bit down here, the plastic hitting that. So it's obviously, uh, I'm very close to the to bottoming out here. Um, there is kind of a little relief here for the foot on on the case over here, but um, I, I can sort of feel it here, but this is a, a nice big thick piece here still. So um, that sits in there nice and flush. And um, this is, uh, this looks like it'll work great. Now the only issue is uh, when I go to mount it, and I'll show this when I put it back in is, uh, you always want to make sure that this antenna is to the side because uh, it'll actually clip um, in the case there. It'll, it might it might hit it when it's going in. I'm gonna go ahead and um, put this back inside now. One of the things I want to mention is again, if the antenna is forward here, you can see there's a little relief cut here in the foam, and um, on the top of the case, um, you can see maybe a little bit here at the very 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 top, there is a little bit of a relief. Um, for the antenna as well. Um, I could probably cut that out and set it forward here, but I'd rather just um, remember to put it to the side. Um, I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. But this way now, when I go to close it, um, you'll probably see it a little bit better. Let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. So now, the case when it closes, that antenna doesn't flex when it's coming in. So as it's coming down before we get to about here and the antenna would already start flexing. So I'm able to shut the case now pretty well and um, looks like it fit pretty well here. Um, before the case would, was about this much open on the side. Um, without having anything else in it. It was just the controller. Now, um, it sits, well, it's kind of crooked here but because of the camera, but it sits pretty flush. Um, and uh, once I get everything else in there, we'll see how it looks. Alright, so let's see how this fits. I'm going to make sure that the antenna is uh, to the left or the right. If I go forward, it's going to hit the top of this, so I need to make sure it's always to the left or right. And that fits great, actually. And that's it. Nice thing about this case is it's a Hard shell case, as I mentioned, it uh, has these little feet, sort of set it down like this, open up the 
container since your drone is sitting on this side of it here. Unzip it and uh, I don't think you can really use this as a seat, but you might be able to. I don't know about trying to launch my drone off of this, but I've seen other people do it, so I may try that in a different video. So I think that's a pretty good um, solution here, and if you have any other questions, uh, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer as best I can.